Imagine, if you will, that I was an Asian politician and I was sat here um, speaking to an Asian lady who just had a 16-year-old daughter, gang raped by seven English lads. It'd be a shocking thing, wouldn't it? In fact, it would be a superfluous thing uh, to do this because it would be all over the media, crying, what, whatever. Um, I find myself um, in a room with a, an English lady, her name of Denise, who's had her 16-year-old daughter gang raped by seven Somalians and you've not had a great deal of attention back up from the police have you? Denise? No I'm appalled at, with how they've handled the investigation yeah not right. been thorough whatsoever. Tell me when this happened? Um, August 2013 just over 40 weeks ago. Yeah 40 weeks is a, is a, is a long time um, it really is. I can't um, being in my side of politics um, I can't imagine if um, a black or an Asian girl had had this uh, imposed upon her in her family, that the reaction would be would be like this. I mean, do you feel that because you're English, um, you're treated in a way that is different? I just don't think that they've used the resources and constantly fob, fobbed me off with the investigation. Uh, whether it is, I don't know, a colour... Hmm colour prejudice, I've no idea. I just, I'm just, i just appalled at the stop gaps that they're telling me that it's down to lack of resources, funding, and constantly being fobbed off of such a, a serious crime that's been committed, and yet yeah, it's, 40, it's nearly 41 weeks later, hmm. and the way they've handled the investigation in the case, the way they, they've dealt with us, when the initial, when it, when it first happened, my husband was handed a piece of pink fluorescent bit of paper with the log number on. Is that how you, is that how that, that a police department deals with such a crime? Well, this, this, is, the, this is the sad thing, this is the, the shocking aspect of all of this, because you, 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 you're, treating, you're treated really, the reaction here is like some kind of car crime, isn't it? And, well, uh, well no, nobody came out to see me, no police. Yeah. I, at four days later, I, I went to the police station screaming and crying and kicking off, demanding somebody come out to explain to, to myself and my husband what's gone on. Mm. You know, they'd spoken to me briefly on the telephone. Nobody had, had come to visit me face to face to discuss what happened to my daughter. That I find quite, quite astonishing, really, when, um, you know, we can, we can, we're always giving away foreign aid to different countries and whatever, we can't even protect our own people and provide them with the basic infrastructure and what we, must be an incredibly traumatic um, thing to have to go through. Um, I, I, can't, I can't imagine uh, how you must feel, not only for this to have happened to you in the first place, not to have had that protection, but also to have been um, left in limbo like this. Uh, I, I did watch a documentary not so long ago, or seen something on the news about... Um another rape victim, and the reporter asked her if she had the choice, would she have gone through the system and reported it? And she said no. And I honestly wish now my daughter had never, ever reported it because of the situation, because of how it's made us feel as a family in 40 weeks, how it's affected us all. And just I, I, the lack of respect I now have for the police, of constantly being fobbed off, of being told that, that it's under-resourced, understaffed, that they don't have the money for the DNA um, testing. Um, and I just can't think of a worse crime and as a mother to be told that they've not got the funding to get relevant articles tested for forensics that would prove that what had happened to my daughter. Hmm. And still, even now today, the police have never had the decency to inform me how many, what, and gone through it in, in, in length with me. It's almost as if they don't really want this kind of thing to um, to get out, denying denying our community any sense of victimhood, isn't it? Really, it's um, it's it's quite astonishing. We're told about their human rights; uh, they couldn't take their passports off yes. them. Yes. Um, I mean, this is something that really does grind with me: the fact that um, other people have rights, right? But when it comes to victims, especially our victims, we're Recategorised, aren't we? As almost bottom of the pile. So these people are—they can't have their passports in, friends. They can't have their rights done. But 
they seem to be able to do what they want with us, don't they? Oh yeah, it's... <laughs> I've got no rights. No, I feel the same way sometimes. Um, I, I think they lost their rights the day they touched my daughter. Well, this is exactly it. We're, de we're dealing with people, really, they're not, they're not boys, are they? They're men yes. we're, t we're talking of now. And uh, I, I feel that uh, to, to do something like this in a gang, premeditated, um, like animals, literally like animals, these people ought, ought to be castrated. I mean... Um, as an adult and as a parent, I can't imagine what my daughter went through, yeah. knowing that what's going to happen... You know, think of it as an adult, you, you, you sat there, you know what's coming. You, hmm. And I, I've spoke to her about it. She, she doesn't like speaking openly about it. And I said, I've raised various questions. Why don't you run? Why don't you scream? She said, I just knew I had to get it over and done with as quick as possible. For a 16-year-old girl hmm. to have to think like that, hmm. I, I, I'm absolutely disgusted. Well, it's when people go, go to me and criticise me and say I'm a bad and evil person because I, I don't want any more mass immigration and you hear the other side of things, what happens, it's not, not all about jobs and paying people's pensions or anything, there's another side to it, the, the forgotten victims. And there's also, um, whilst we've got the perpetrators out there who are bad enough, I feel there's another section of society in our own community who are almost as much to blame and that's the social services people that know these things are going on the police who don't seem to want to do a proper job and catch these people and we've now got a culture where th there's a pretense that this doesn't happen and you've just got a whole um well thousands more potential victims out there um to this where these these people they're, they're just laughing at us aren't they really i mean um that's that's the way it is. The way I the way I see it, we're we're the victims. So what? You can't do anything about it. Um. Well, I, with, with the police, at one point I think on the twenty third of January, they'd wrote um, a letter to a local MP on my behalf, telling me that since the incident, they dealt with a hundred a hundred and eighty eight other rape crimes hmm. and ninety nine inquiries. Uh, you interpret that, in other words, they've been extremely busy too busy to deal with my daughter yeah. and, and the situation that's occurred to her. Yeah. We've been put bottom of the pile, that's how I feel. Well, unfortunately you're, you're not the only ones, there are thousands more victims out there, some of them don't have the uh, strength of character and integrity that you and your daughter have got in coming forward and perhaps doing something to stop something like this happening again. But. Uh, I would add that uh, as well as the perpetrators of this sickening crime, when we do get justice, and we will, I would say that some of those um, teachers, social services people, and senior members of the police ought to be charged themselves because they know what's going on and they're not prepared to do something about it. They're quite prepared to take the money and be paid for the middle class jobs and in a way to keep their children away from this thing, but they know all the time that this thing is going on, which is just as sickening. I raised this issue with the police the other day, obviously, out of despair. Hmm. One of the questions I said was, if the shoe was on the other foot and it had happened to one of your children, a police officer's daughter, you telling me there had been a restriction on the process of no money, no resources for DNA and various other things, like what's been told to myself. Hmm. One rule for one, one for the yes. other. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I when I was driving up here, I um, I was I was thinking about um, how we'd approach this, and sometimes I come up with things that uh, other people don't don't think of. And what I've come up with is with the way our children are sold into multiculturalism. English children, British children are sold into multiculturalism, and this predatory religion in Islam that uh, preys upon our young people. It's almost as if our education system uh, deceives and pulls the wool over people's eyes and facilitates this. In a way, our multicultural religion in itself, because there's two religions here, there's multiculturalism and there's predatory Islam. It's almost as if our kids are coming out of school pre-stunned to be victims of Islam. In other words, they're not told the truth. They're not told about reality. It's more important to um, perpetuate multiculturalism and egalitarianism and diversity 
than to protect our own children. I think that's a very, it's a very strong way of saying things. Uh, but when I see things like this happening to our people, that's the way I feel. Um, I can't help the way that, that I feel. God only knows what you must be thinking. Well, when my daughter raised the arm and got the police, she described them all as brown. Hmm. When I asked her, what does she mean by brown? Does she mean Pakistani, Indian, Jamaican? She said, they're just brown. They were all mm -hmm. brown. She didn't race categorise them. She just described them as being brown, of a brown race. Mm. Mm. And there was another final we'll end up for this portion of this interview. It's, it's very harrowing for you. Um, and you've been very brave in, 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 in tackling this. Um, when your daughter was taken for the identification, you told me that it wasn't exactly handled very well, was it? No, I'd taken her on three different occasions to do the Viper ID at the mm -hmm. police unit. Um, the second occasion I, I took her, I was waiting about five, ten minutes in the, in the police station, um, buzzing the buzzer for the desk sergeant to attend. There was two other people in the reception area waiting, sat down seated. When eventually I took my finger off the buzzer, kept buzzing, um, I looked around the waiting room and there must have been 20 other brown people in the room at which when I looked at the side my daughter stood there in the corner uh, scared stiff um, anyhow after we'd, she'd done the these are these are some of the the people that she thinks have, have done this crime as well no she didn't have a, it was the first time she's been exposed to a gang a coloured gang since the incident had happened to her mm. and it just made as a mother I, I could just see the fear in my daughter stood there in the police station mm. um there was no separate entrance for she was we, we weren't taken to a separate entrance for her to walk in i then think that has hindered some of her identification and it, as a mum it wasn't nice to watch my daughter being frightened and no. you shouldn't be frightened sat in a police station no